Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys figure preview video. Before we begin, I have to say a massive thank you to Ryan Kirkwood for going out with me in person to ACGHK in Hong Kong and taking some badass high res pictures. Show Ryan some love in the comments below, without him this series and this video in fact wouldn't be possible. Now, collectible companies, they seem to really, really struggle to let Heath Ledger's Joker go. Just to have what's on the market be it for Heath Ledger's Joker. We've just got far too many versions. Hot Toys have made like 85 of them. We had the in-art one most recently, and now another version of Heath Ledger's Joker. Maybe the best one yet. We will have to wait and see. A lot of people are saying, hey, Justin, what do you think about this new Hot Toys DX Artisan Joker, specifically the rooted hair version compared to Inart? Well, I don't know. I want to get this thing in hand, we'll do comparisons, and then I'll let you know which one I prefer. Right now, my opinion is, Hot Toys? What the hell? If you could do this the whole time, why not innovate? Why not do rooted wall hair? Why not do moving eyes with every single Hot Toys figure? Instead of innovating like they knew they could, quite clearly this is the evidence of that, they decided not to do that and enter Inart, who did start to innovate, and that gave Hot Toys the kickstart they needed. But if they didn't wait and they were doing this the whole time, they wouldn't even be in Inart. Sometimes these companies, they're just their own worst enemy. Hot Toys, you could have been doing this type of figure the whole darn time. He does come with the usual Joker accessories, but one new one. He does often, in the movie, move his tongue around and sort of lick the side of his mouth. It's just what he does. So I'm glad we have the tongue, and it's pretty interesting the way it inserts into the head sculpt. We'll talk about that in just a second. You do get a full array of hands. No ungloved hands this time, unlike the DX11. And no seamless forearms, and no prison cell diorama. So this is literally just meant to be Purple Coat Joker. Now the tongue is kind of like this block, it doesn't look overly wet and glossy but they've got time to fix that for the production version. The way it works is you remove the teeth from the inside of the head sculpt, you reach inside it then pull out the teeth. Then you would slide this tongue in, so it doesn't insert from the outside, it inserts from the inside of the head sculpt. Very curious to see how this works in practice, we've never seen Hot Toys do anything like this before. Going forward though, why not experiment with swap out teeth and tongues if it's a character like Harley Quinn or Joke for example? Yeah, totally, it could definitely work. The guns aren't die cast as far as I can tell, but they're painted well. Got silver chipping and dry brushing, this mottled metal texture on the surface specifically of this submachine gun. And the stock, I would imagine, folds out like the previous version of this gun that we've received from countless different versions of Joker. It comes with a full array of knives, including the butterfly knife, which is my personal favourite. And the display base is interesting. Even though this is up for pre-order, Hot Toys, it seems, haven't quite decided yet if this base is going to be magnetic or not. I would prefer if they used the shin clamp like they did for DX Indie. That is just the most stable option and it's fairly well hidden. Right now, though, unconfirmed. There is a bat symbol in the middle, and this display base is USB-C powered, so you can plug it in and light up that bat symbol. It's a bit weird to me that there's a random bat symbol in the middle of the road, but still, it's a cool effect. If you want to have it lit up, you totally can. Not me, though. I don't think I'm going to have that bat symbol lit up. It's subtle enough that it does disappear into the concrete texture. It just looks like some more cracks in the ground at a glance. Now that I'm seeing this display base actually, that little rock around the back, does that not look a little bit suspect to you? It does to me, almost as though it's removable and then you could insert a crotch grabber or some kind of dynamic flight stand. Not necessary for the Joker, still totally something that I could see a possibility for. Maybe you will be able to remove that rock and install said crotch grabber. We will have to wait and see. Hot Toys themselves aren't quite sure what they're going to do. His shoes are fully sculpted, unlike the felted versions from DX11. Some might consider that a step backwards, or not. But you can install the blade around the front, which you couldn't for the in-art version. So that is a win for Hot Toys. The pants, well tailored, quite sharp looking. The pinstripes are accurate. But the colour might be a touch too saturated for me personally. All of the behind the scenes shot of Heath in costume. 
they were very dark and gloomy looking. The colours weren't super punchy like we're seeing on this one. He does still have dirt and grime on the outside of the coat, more so than I was expecting. The promo pics made it look very, very clean, completely unweathered. In Dean's video, he also brought up the fact that, yeah, it looked pretty much brand new pristine condition, and it looked like it was that bath roby material from the DX11. This time, I'm pleased to report it's not. I saw this thing in person, in fact I took most of these pictures. It's very thin, so it's accurate to a 1-6 scale coat, and it hugs the body perfectly, and that weathering, being that little bit more visible and stronger than I thought it was going to be, that just makes Hot Toys coat even more accurate. I'd even almost say more accurate than Ianart's one. Maybe not the cut and the tailoring, but having that lapel be so flat down the front of the jacket, that looks great. And the buttons, they're on point as well. I can't fault Hot Toys coat, the material it's made of. The lining is a very saturated orange, almost red, and it has a satin finish to it, which is accurate to the screen used Joker costume, which I've also seen in person. The grenades, the little safety pins, it's all there, and the grenades are removable. If you don't want them there, you can totally take them out. Because if you do have them there and you have him just standing in your collection, without him holding the jacket open in a grenade pose, it will look a little bit big and bulky, so this is just meant to be for the grenade pose rather than used all the time in the display. Now this is the sculpted hair head sculpt. The underlying head sculpt itself is the same across both of them. It's just the hair choice that's different. The other one, rooted hair, we'll discuss in just a second. The expression is solid, and there is so much skin texture here. There is so much detail. We've got pores. We've got frown lines. You can see skin tone poking through from underneath the makeup. The eyes are movable. You've even got this almost craggly looking skin around the scarring for the mouth. That's some next level attention to detail. I love this head sculpt. I'm not ready to say that it's better than both of the Inard head sculpts yet, but in person, yeah, we will sure as shit compare them. Don't worry, I'm going to make that happen. Now, the rooted hair version, the outfit is exactly the same. He also has the gold chain underneath the purple jacket. And one thing that Hot Toys were very proud of mentioning is that they've done some extra work with the wiring in the collar to make sure that it sits as flush to the body as possible. So that collar, the shirt collar, is actually fully wired, surprisingly. Okay, Hot Toys, I gave you shit earlier about not innovating, and I stick by that. If you could do this the whole time, then what the hell? Were you just hoping we wouldn't ask for more and then you wouldn't have to put in the effort? Whatever reason that you have... This rooted hair joker head sculpt is fucking incredible. I'm really, really impressed. Seriously, I've seen a lot of figures in my time, and this might just be one of the most realistic ever. It's right up there with Inart, and I can't wait to do a proper comparison. All of the good stuff that I just said about the expression, having the teeth exposed, and being able to swap the tongue, and the skin texture, and the pores, all of that stuff applies with this head sculpt. But the hair, it just takes it to a whole nother level. The strands are super fine, it's wool hair, so it's much more versatile than the dolly hair they were using previously. This one, with the dirty blonde roots and having the hairline be as clean as it is, seriously, those individual strands are so darn tiny but glued to perfection. Then the makeup extending onto the top of the hairline, and having the strands be as thin as they are. If Hot Toys can pull this off in production, and by all means, I reckon they can, because they produced hundreds of figures at this point, this might just be their best and most realistic figure ever. We will have to wait and see. Fingers crossed, not too long. For me, this time, it's rooted hair or bust. This thing looks insanely good. If you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.